Hi, I'm Art Smith, and we're standing here at Sparkman's Wharf, which is right in, outside of downtown Tampa on the waterfront. And we're standing in front of the original Splitsville. For those of you who've been to Splitsville before, you know that it's a really fun place to go. They've got bowling, they've got lawn bowling, ski ball, all kinds of games to play in there, even something called feather bowling, which you will have to find out about in a few minutes. Now, those of you who know me know that I've been known to talk to myself, but today I'll be talking to a different art smith. Yes, yeah, Splitsville brought in world famous chef Art Smith, formerly Oprah's personal chef, who has cooked for four presidents and is now on tour with Michelle Obama promoting her book around the country. He's known as Mr. Fried Chicken and it's appropriate that Splitsville is known for fried chicken and cocktails. He's an awesome guy. We're going to learn a lot about him in a few minutes. He's been married to his husband, Jesus, for 10 years, but they've been together a lot longer. He's a sixth generation Floridian, so he's known for his southern cuisine with a Florida twist. And he's done a lot of other really cool stuff, too. He's the guy who put together 101 gay weddings, not once, but twice. And he also has his own restaurants in various parts of the country. My favorite is Southern Art and Bourbon Bar right in Buckhead in Atlanta, inside the Intercontinental Hotel. So today we're going to head inside and we're going to meet Art Smith. So you're going to have Art Smith squared. And we're going to talk about his history, about his um, mansion up in North Florida, about his personal life, and about all the fun stuff he's doing. And of course, how he feels about pride. So you've heard all about Splitsville on the outside. And now we're inside where it's nice and cool. And I'm sitting here next to my namesake, Art Smith. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, Art. <laughs> two Arts, one, but well, what else is there? Two Art Smiths in one place. Who yeah, could figure that? So a lot of people don't know a lot of stuff about you. A lot of people know one or two little things. But one of the things that really impressed me when I first met you is that well, now you've been married for, what, eight years, right? I'm um, going, no, nine years. Nine years. Yeah. But you've been together almost 20. I mean, yes, you've been... we have. Yeah, we, as Oprah says, I found Jesus in South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oprah had a house on um, Fisher Island, and I used to go to Fisher Island and buy things, and I had thrown the florist out because he trashed the table, and, and I went to buy flowers, and there was Jesus, and him, Jesus and I met, and a few months later, you know, I was crying about not having a husband and a boyfriend, and um, I didn't know what a husband was in those days. I just wanted to right. and, um, and so we... Uh, we were introduced by a friend, and um, he said, let's just call Jesus up. I'm like, okay, okay, uh, or unless you're Moses or something, like, <laughs> so we called him up, and he answered the phone, and he went out with me, and we and we um, we had a date over pizza. I, I saw the funniest thing last night. I was, um, some friends of mine, um, a, a young uh, couple who've just moved to Tampa, and um, he says, I want to take you to Cheese, please. And uh, have you been to Cheese Please? No, I haven't it's, even it's heard of it. It's the greatest little cheese wine bar, and it's owned by a gay couple, and it's wonderful. Anyway, um, I'm going there. I'm drinking my wine. I'm having my cheese sandwich, and I love this sign. It says, "Try, stop trying to be loved by everyone. You're not pizza." <laughs> you know, and you know, but it's funny. Like, hey, Susan, I met her with pizza, but you know, everyone loves pizza. But it was funny. Like, you're not. You, you try, stop trying to be to love everyone or be loved. You know, but um. It's been a really delightful adventure, you know, when he, when we met, he says, I think it's wonderful that you're chef to this amazing woman and all that, but you need to be you. And I said, what does that mean? He says, you need to write a book. I said, oh no. He said, yes, you have something to say and you should write a book. So he's the one that pushed me, but uh, probably if I didn't go down this route, I probably would have just been a personal chef. I love being a personal chef. I took care of two governors of Florida, Bob Graham and Jeff Bush. And, um, and four presidents. Yeah, I've done four. all that. Yep. But I really was, I don't know what happened. I, he, he made me see that I could be more. Um, you know, I'm the chef on the Michelle Obama tour. And, um, and I, uh, and you know, I did one of her spotlights. I'm becoming, you know, and, uh, and you know, and I, you know, I found out that 
you know, with the relationships that I have with all these people, you know, when you feed people, it's a very intimate act. It's like close to the other thing, you know? Right. Because that intimacy that you create. And um, especially when it's a memorable meal. Exactly. And unlike the other other stuff we're talking about, we're going to be a, we're going to be a little A plus ready here. Uh, it's that uh, it's that if, when it's bad, it's bad. You're like no more of that. No thank you very much. No more of that. But um, but anyway, um, it's it's a really wonderful way to connect to people. And when you cook or you, when you cook or you eat together, you're all the same. Right. Like I have a, a dear friend. You're probably familiar with the, the, the Bare Naked Chef. Uh, Adrian uh, D. Barandina. He and I are very close, good friends. And I have to say, you know, everyone has soulmates. He's my cooking mate. We cook together and it's just beautiful. We did a wonderful dinner like a week ago in Fort Lauderdale and it was so beautiful. And every time we cook, it's absolutely wonderful. I know he doesn't cook naked with me, but he, he's got clothes with me. But he, but I, I love him and I love the fact, you know, and I love the fact that. Um, he's part of the LGBT community, like myself. You know, I'm I'm affectionately known as Papa Bear, but uh, oh my God, I'm going to be 59 <laughs> in three days. That's okay. I got you beat. I'm going to be 60 at the end of March. Oh really? So, okay. Well, okay. What is what is what is the new 60 like? Is that being say like the new 40 or 50 or what? Okay, it's apparently it's what you make of it. I guess so. you know if you try if you if you try to dress like your grandfather dressed and and kind of drag your feet sloughing across the house, you're going to feel a lot older. Yeah. But if you get out and you're you know, enthusiastic yeah. Yeah. and have energy. Yeah, I agree. You don't think about it. I just keep um, really nice people around me. I haven't even met my friend Brett who's with me today. He's lost over 100 pounds. I have to show you these pictures. I mean, he's amazing. He's like a monster in the gym. Um, I love people that are self-motivated. Well, who, and speaking of that, you lost like 125 yes, or 30 pounds. Yeah, we did, and we've gained a little bit back, but we're still not as big as we once were. But, you know, there's still, you know, there's not as much bear, but it's, there's just as much love. But, um, but I... Um, I've been, you know, it's been a wonderful adventure. You know, if we go from personal chefing now to restaurants. Well, and, go ahead. I know historically a lot of people refer to you as Mr. Fried Chicken. Yeah. Um, you know, Mr. Comfort Food, because that's kind of what you... Right. But really what the theme is in everything you do, not just the food, is love. Yeah, it's love. I mean, you're, you, and, you and Jesus, after a chance meeting with a friend and a couple of conversations, went and adopted a whole family of four children. Well, we did. In your 50s. Yeah, which is, I keep thinking like, what were we doing? But they're adorable and they're sweet. And, um, and I see your posts with your travels and stuff with them and it's it's all like an act of love. It's not, yeah. you know, tedious. You enjoy doing it, you enjoy showing them off. Yeah, they're sweet and they're, um, but they are teenagers. They're, they're, they're children, they're young, but the 13 year old, 16 year old will make me uh, see Jesus a few times, but I want <laughs> Jesus or ask for Jesus. But they're, they're sweet kids, and, um, you know, we, I, I always say, you know, I, I didn't we, I, I didn't adopt them because I needed something to love me. I have lots of love in my life. I just felt like I love helping change their lives, you know, and give them a better life. And um, and, I, and, I, and I adopt people, and, and I help, because well, I help build them they're up, and, you know, I have friends that are challenged, and I have friends that, you know, look to me for advice and stuff. But, um. It's been a great adventure, and, and the restaurants have basically been a vehicle for me to do other great things. You know, I love picking here in Tampa, here with Splitsville Social. Um, what I love about it is just that it will enable us to do more of what I love doing, and that is with the kids program, teaching kids how to cook. And this will open doors, like today, I'm going to meet with another well-regarded person and, and some other people and help build that here in Tampa. Um, I think it's, you know, it's really important that we, um, you know, like, you know, we can get tight cast in these roles, okay? Chef, blah, blah, blah. But the reality, as a chef, it comes with your ability to really connect with people. It enables you to do other things. Well, isn't that what Common Threads is all about? Common Threads is all about that. And the, whole, the whole purpose of the program. Hey, Sue's had an idea after we bought an old sacred place was like, you're going to teach cooking and I'm going to teach art. And through that, we're going to teach other lessons. Well, that's, we went down that road and, and we've been done it. And now we're celebrating 15 years. We're in wow. nine states, and we teach over a half million kids. Um, I have a wonderful person that I hired the first when it first was created, and Linda Novick O'Keefe has been with us ever since. But um, but and it was only started with twenty thousand dollars, and and, the, and and that's all I ever had to do. And, and I and now and I've been the chairman now for fifteen years, and wow. and I'm looking at having a financial person be the chairman because I feel in order for it to grow, 
another 15 years, and another 15 years. I mean, it's easy to close a restaurant. Right. I mean, it's sad, whatever, but the reality is, if you close a program, and these children don't get an education, it's really sad because it affects them for life. So, you know, it's my objective to make it so that we can keep the, the program, you know. How to be self-sustaining. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm really happy with that. And um, it's great to be here. It's great to be partner of the um, Guy and Mark, <laughs> are my partners that we met at Walt Disney World. I went to Disney five years ago and I said, there needs to be um, a great Southern restaurant that does it. And I, and I kind of explained where Right. they do and they told me about this new development called Disney Springs and I saw a picture I said well it looks like Florida but I don't taste it I said well what does your Florida taste like well let me show you so homecoming became a fact of life it was my, my return to Florida that was my homecoming and also coming back to Walt Disney World I'm the first cast member in Walt Disney World history maybe the Disney company has opened uh, a business and so that's really cool and um, so they they I went through all this ordeal to get this approved, and I didn't have partners. And Disney um, created the marriage between Guy and Mark and I, and so we created Homecoming. And they came to me, they said, you know, Art, we're repositioning, redoing the original Splitsville, which has been here 15 years. Right. And they and I said, could we put a little Art Smith magic? And I said, let's do that. There you have it. And here it is. Right. And it's amazing. You know, I've, the first restaurant of yours that I went to, was in Atlanta. Yeah, it was Southern Art. Still Southern there. Art and Bourbon Bar. Busy as ever. And um, of course, the first question he asked me when we when we met was, "Would you like something to drink?" And naturally, I said, "Of course, bourbon." Right. Uh, and the, the collection of bourbon there is amazing. Yeah, it's just a huge bourbon. Um, it's one of the biggest bourbon bars in South. But more importantly, the place itself—it's a really nice location in a fancy hotel. Right. You know, it's a beautiful restaurant. But when you sit down at the table to eat that food, it's like going to grandma's house on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, the food is authentic. It's, right. it's um, southern. Right. You know, it's got a nice, rich flavor yeah. to it. It's comfort food. Well, Patrick Seal, this is Chef Patrick Seal. It's a little millennial company. And Patrick's got some delicious deviled eggs. He does the fire run the best. And do, uh, Speaking of food. Thigh high biscuits here that we have, which are my biscuits. And they do the wonderful spicy sauce, which I love. So what, and, did you, what is in the biscuits? Um, the biscuits, it's a cheddar biscuit and it's our fried chicken and then it's, it has a, a honey sauce and then we have our mac and cheese which will make you see Jesus and our biscuits <laughs> and fried chicken and then this is our goddess, southern goddess salad I guess and then, wow. and then um, yeah, but it's chef, that, yeah, we'll, we need those utensils, that's good too, it's a, <laughs> thank you, but anyway, um, yeah. thank you, so um, anyway, it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a really fun thing. You know, the, my food has never been complicated, but that wasn't my purpose. My purpose was to create delicious home-style food that would engage people. Most importantly, first priority is that the guests have a good time with each other. Right. And that second priority, that the food is good and enables them to do that. The food does not come before the guests. Now, the, the concept of your food and the, the recipes that you use, the new items that you invent over the years, have they changed since... Oh, yeah. You started on your diet? Um, not, you, no, or? not really, because Oprah always said just because I'm on a diet don't mean my guests are on a diet. Exactly. So I don't I don't go there. This is what I want to show you. You know, we make the most amazing look, I just want to show you this, okay? Oh wow. my god, look at just look at that. Okay, can we say that, that is, cheese please? Look at that. That, that is crazy good looking. And you have to try some of that. You go like I Lord will. Jesus God. So I remember when we first met, we talked about a little bit, you were following the uh, political progress in Illinois at the time oh my God, on gay marriage. Look at, look at the... I know. Yep. Um, I dealt now. And then after that, you did something that was really amazing, and I think a little bit of it got lost in the hype about the event itself, that you were so integrally involved in it, and that was the 101 gay weddings. You did that in two places, right? You did it in Atlanta, and you did it in Miami. That was... what, But it served its purpose. It, what it did, it would took something that was very important topic of the time to a public place where a lot, like I've done the South Beach Winter Wine Festival for years, and it's one of the most media driven events in America and the world. And I knew if I pulled off this event, it would get a lot of media. And so that's, it that's what I did. And you know, we first started out with Big Gay Ice Cream Social, and that was to bring awareness, and then Pam Bundy, the, the 
attorney general kept trying to stop it. And I said, you know what? You are mean, you are Cruella de Vil, and I'm going to marry 101 gay couples, and that's what we did. And, um, you know, like, I'm sure now, you know, she realizes that she was wrong, and um, they all do, you know, but um, but it, it's, we, um, I think it's important that we continue, you know, you know with the transgender rights, we need to be just as um, tough about keeping that. And, um, you know, there's a lot where we're kind of laying in the trenches, have come to the surface now, and you're hearing a lot more stories about a lot more people that were pretty quiet about it before. You know, well, I think for me it was easy because I was I was associated with the celebrity. It's, it, it's easy being gay in in the whole food television world because they they we've always been looked upon as the the gestures, the funny ones. Okay, right. and some people may not like that, but regardless. It enabled us to get to a place, and now it's up to us to use it to our benefit, you know. But, um, you know, like, you know, we always typecast. They're the hairdressers, they're the right. florists, or whatever, you know. The reality is, they're the construction workers. They're they're the people that keep the cars going. They're we're everywhere. I know I have friends who are gay who are. Immigration attorneys, right. auto mechanics, right. you know, there's no telling. I mean, people have, in all walks of life. And um, I remember asking, you know, you were talking about the celebrity industry. I remember asking, around the same time I met you, um, I was talking to Lance Bass about the, the whole marriage referendum and everything. And I asked him when he came out if that was a setback for him. And he said, well, a little bit. There were some people in the industry that immediately turned their back on me. He said, but... Overall, I was, you know, pretty well accepted, and it taught me who my friends really were. And I noticed when you did 101 Gay Weddings here in, in Miami, isn't that the one that Guy Fieri officiated? So you brought another chef from, you know, your world of cooking no. in. I brought him in, and they were, and they, and they were concerned that he wasn't friendly. Well, he is friendly. And then I, you know, I brought in Ted Allen. Everybody loves Ted Allen. And, and, and Duff Goldman has to be the most um, gay-friendly person I've ever met in my life. And um, he makes the cake. Um, you know, we, um, we found, I found out from that event how many people were supportive. When we got married in Washington, oh my God, what a celebration that was. That was you know, what, around 2010? Yeah. yeah. And we, we, Jesus, I only had two requests. One was, I want to get married by Marion Williamson, the spiritualist, and I want to get married at um, the Lincoln Memorial. And I'm like, okay, call Oprah for Marion, call God for the other one, because <laughs> I knew. <laughs> well, Jesus knows God pretty well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I knew, that, you know, I, I always tease, you know, I'm married to, I'm married to Jesus. Only thing, my Jesus doesn't perform miracles. He expects them. But um, <laughs> anyway, we, um, we, I got an attorney, and by a leap of faith, on the very, very end, um, she found a loophole that stated that with a $65 protest license, you could do it. So we protest our love. We got married. And then it was crazy. We got married again, and we had Straight No Chase with those beautiful guys singing on Hello. I saw them on PBS. I said, have you ever done a gay wedding before? And he said, no, we'd love to. Boom, they came. They were in Atlantic City. And then I had Moby come uh -huh. perform, and Moby had never done a gay wedding. So it was really new and fresh, and we had a lot of guests who'd never been to a gay wedding. Said this: "This is what all the fuss is about. I don't see the problem." You know, so it was very interesting. So we have, you know, it was, and I did it to be honest with you. You know, I did the wedding big, big and flashy, just to show America that to be proud and that we were great Americans. You know, and you know, so you know, it's kind of like you know, we have to understand that every action that we do, there is a reaction and how we can somehow another make a, a big difference that can either be positive or negative. Well, next time you did meet, next time you decide to do a huge gay wedding, this is good. they are, I just tasted it. Um, the next time you decide to do a huge gay wedding, you have to make sure you invite me because believe it or not, I have never been to a gay wedding. You've never been? I have never Lord been to Jesus, a gay wedding. Lord Jesus, where have you been, you poor thing? I know, I've never been to a gay wedding. There's several things I've never done in my life. Another one is I've never met Jesus. Despite the fact that the whole reason we started talking in the first place was because people kept asking me, how are you and Jesus doing? 
Uh, I've still never met your husband, Jesus. He's never in town when I've been in town. Well, where you know, you are. He, he's wandering. You know, he. I dropped him off this morning. Dropped me off, and he said he was going to go to the phone store. And obviously, he's gone. I don't know what he's doing. He's found something. He's probably. He's a collector of everything, so he's found something to collect. And he's Venezuelan, right? Right, Venezuelan. So, so yes, go ahead. His artwork, though, you know, I've seen photographs of some of his gallery shows, some of the pieces right. near home, and everything. There's just amazing talent there. I mean, he's an incredible no, he's artist. No, he, you know, in the beginning, he was uh, a very well-regarded florist, and he did flowers for all the famous people, you know, and uh, worked for ABC, did a lot for Barbara Waters and stuff like that. And he got into his paintings, and he, he, uh, his grandfather inspired him in Venezuela. Grandfather gave him a toy, and he, and he had made this toy, and he just didn't like the color of it. So his grandfather said, well, you paint it the color you wanted. There you have it. And there you go. Yeah. And he hasn't put down the paint for us since. You no. Know? And he, you know, we went, we went through a few years ago, he was doing the manhole covers, the utility covers around the world, every country you visit. We have them from Russia, China, Singapore, Africa, you name it. And they're all very unusual and different. And, um, and so, and now he's doing his mandalas. Um, we've had the opportunity to cook twice for the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And he, and we went to a, an event where these Buddhists were making this beautiful mandala. And you know, they make these beautiful mandala out of colored sands and then they just kind of blow it away, which is, you know, right. incredible. But it's more, more or less an, an act of meditation. And um, so um, he made this beautiful mandala. That is very cool. Thank you. Now, right now, well, last week and next week, you're traveling around the country with one of the most talked about women in the country. So I keep hearing her name, please run for president, we love you, you know. You're traveling with Michelle Obama on her right. book tour. How is that? I mean, is that... She's lovely. We've been friends now for almost as long as they since I've been married. Um, we, we live down the street from them in Kenwood High Park in Chicago. And um, I met them, you know, actually met them um, that night at Oprah's, where Oprah said, I'll make you president. And um, I was making dinner. And, um, and she said to Michelle, she said, you know, let Art cook for you. That's all she wrote. The rest is history. Yeah, the kids came over and made pizza at our house. Um, and they, we've been friends ever since. And we cook very simple food. Um, my chef, Ray Villalobos, who's been my chef from day one, we started the whole restaurant business by doing parties in the house, like underground wow. parties. And they would get bigger and bigger and bigger. The neighbor said, y'all, the Walmart and the parties. And then um, uh, a man, I met a man, and he had bought Oprah's farm in Indiana. And I said, what does a person do that buys Oprah's farm? Because it was a big farm. He said, well, I'm real estate. And I said, what kind of real estate? He said, I love historical estate. And I said, well, I love that. And I, I said, what about that little row house? He says, I own that. And he goes like, and he, I said, um, what's cool? I said, um, what, do you, what should it be? I said, it should be a charming little restaurant. So he gave me my first million dollars up in my first restaurant. Able 52? Yep. And now we re repositioned it as Blue Door Kitchen and it has blown up and continues after almost 15 years to be a very popular restaurant. It's where fried chicken was put on white tablecloth. Um, it's all started there. Every, I, I would say that restaurant has, has inspired other great restaurants in our in our company. And so it's really amazing. And um, you know, it's, it's so I'm really happy. I'm like now, okay, what's next? I mean, it's, it's great, you know, like now we're going to this 21 city tour, five are in Europe. I'm going to Bosnia to do an wow. in, in incubation of um, business. I, before, under Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, and also um, the, um, John, John, the other Secretary, John, um, oh my God, I can't remember. Now. God bless you. But anyway, um, John Kerry. Secretary of State, I, um, I travel the world as chef diplomat. And I went, I was the first chef diplomat to go to Israel. Um, I went to the West Bank, the Ramallah, and, and then I went to the Baltics. And I, the Baltics have a, a really, um, at the time, were um, suffering from um, the LGBT community and there had been some scares and stuff and they were getting ready for um, Euro Pride. And uh, so I helped them with that. I threw a bunch of other things. And, and under the U.S. Um, Embassy, State Department, I was able to go as, not only as a chef diplomat, but as a gay chef diplomat, 
and really helped provide right, that's that that was a big deal and that's, that is pretty crazy so we're going we're doing that and i'm going to jordan and we're going to go help with the um, syrian um, refugee camps in october so you're going to be busy yeah i'm always busy i'm i'm talking you've got plenty of time to sleep when you're dead <laughs> so i know um a few years ago you purchased a house up in uh, North Georgia, in Jasper. Yeah, and, North uh, Florida. I mean, North Florida. That, I mean, Georgia on my mind. Georgia, yeah, I, Lower Georgia. <laughs> uh, in Jasper, Florida. And um, I know it happens to be called the Smith Mansion, which has right. it's no, no the, bearing no, on... No, no, I'm not, I'm not one of those Smiths. But your family is from that area, also. Yeah, they've been there over 100 years. And I bought the historic Wardlaw Smith Mansion. It's a beautiful colonnade house. It's on a whole city block. Beautiful, very beautiful. And um, we have been working to make it into a center. We, we've already started a farmer's market. I want to do some cooking and some other things. It's a long process. It takes a lot of money. And, so, um, so how was it with you going back there and kind of small, what we consider rural, backwoods kind right, of right. area, as someone who was born there, but now coming back, not only as a celebrity, but someone who is married to a man and has four adopted children. Was that awkward? Or? I, I, well, they didn't, they didn't seem awkward. I think um, as time got by, I kind of saw things, but I don't know. I think people in general have been nice and everything. The kids may have been challenged a little bit. Because of their ethnicity or because of the... No, just being gay, have gay parents. And, and little kids can say little things to them, but yeah. um, I hired an amazing man, Thor, I call him, <laughs> Brandon, Ben Coleman. He's like six foot six, he's huge. And he, and he, nobody clear, messes with Thor. No, or the kids, or Jesus. He's like anti bullying, anti everything. He takes no prisoner. And it's not that I needed it, but the fact is I travel so much. Yeah. I wanted someone close to watch my family. Well, you know, I think Florida in general is changing a lot. I don't know if you knew this. But when we came to Florida about five years ago, uh, one of the first people we interviewed at the Camp of Pride festivities here uh, in Tampa was the woman who was then the chief of police. And her name is Jane Castor. She was on the police force for 31 years. Right. And openly lesbian. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now she, through all the polls that I've seen, is the leading candidate running for mayor of Tampa Fantastic. for an election that's in just a week or two. You never would have expected that when you were 10 years no. old in North Georgia. North no, Mayor Castor, we love that. Yeah, exactly. So it's an incredible place. I'm really, really proud of the way things are here and the, and the excitement. Fantastic. If you can uphold the law, I think you can uphold the politics. I love Tampa. Tampa is one of the city that when I was young, I came to and you newly, newly out. I had a great time here. Well, we're glad yeah. you're here now yeah. on a permanent basis. And um, we're looking forward to, you know, seeing what happens with Splitsville and how yeah, much more influence you have in well, the city. Yeah, you know, listen, let's get some kids program going, but it's been a pleasure, Arnie. Thank you. Nice to meet y'all. Likewise. And, and, um, and here's to the LGBT community, LGBT community here in Tampa. Um, you know, we're everywhere. Just remember, everything you do, you can make a huge difference. Um, so be kind, as my friend Lady Gaga says. <laughs>